everyone, welcome to Crochet Objet Knitting. If you're new here, my name is Mo. On today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a few steps on the crochet fish making Sami. This crochet fish pattern is available in my Etsy shop. I will leave link to the pattern down below in the description box for you. Um, on today's video, I'm gonna be showing you a few steps. I will be showing how to embroider this turquoise embroidery line. And then I will show how to make the eyes and attach them to the head. And on the last part, I will show you how to make the tail and how to weave in the ends. This fish made out of the head part is made out of a fingering four ply sock yarn, just a little bit. Uh, held together with any color of silk mohair that you want to match. Uh, the body is made out of my granny kit cotton yarn, in this case in the shell gray color, held together with silk mohair that I have from Knitting for Olive in color beige. I made this tutorial to support you along with the making of the pattern and I really hope you find it helpful. Please, if you enjoyed give the video the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and let's get started. So now I'm at the point when I want to make this turquoise line attached to these front loops left from round three of the body. Let me show you how I embroider this turquoise line. This fish I just started to work on, I made the head out of this fingering sock yarn and out of this silk mohair from knitting for olive. These two were um, worked at the head part of the fish. And now I'm working the body out of these two. My uh, four ply cotton yarn, granny kit cotton yarn, which you can find in my Etsy shop and uh, knitting for olive white uh, silk mohair and as the pattern tell me I have just to to leave it as is and to uh, work the embroidery line so I just made the last stitch a little bigger just to secure it you can also put um, a little safety pin here just to secure it I'm putting it aside and now for the embroidery line I use a four ply fingering sock yarn that I have again in my stash. I also used in some cases, let me show you, I think here I used four ply cotton, my granny kit cotton yarn in color turquoise. So it's up to you, you can use any embroidery yarn that you want to work with. So let me just show you how I make this embroidery. It's very simple actually. I want to be as close as I can to these front loop stitches that are left from round three on the body. And because we work spiral, this line is not a perfect line. And you can see this juggle here. I'm using the stitches. I'm using like the holes of the stitches on top of this front loop line. And I'm just inserting my needle just like this. I'm a left-handed, but you can get the idea and do it with using your right hand. And then I'm going back to the same place where I just came out of and I then go out with my tapestry needle from the next hole or whatever you call it. I hope it will be easier for you to follow just from watching me doing this embroidery line. And I don't want to pull too tight because I want them to show, yeah? And then once again, I'm going inside the last, uh, next to the last stitch, 
and then to the next hole next to my yarn working yarn Yeah, you can see how it created like as a couple to the front loops line. So let me finish the round and I'll be back to show you how I juggle the end of the round. Uh, and the spiral effect that we have at the end of the round. So now I'm at the point where I want to finish this embroidery line, but I have this juggle that created from the fact that we are working spiral. So on the last step, what I will do is that I will take my needle a little bit downwards. You see, not on top, of the front loop left from round three, but I'll take it a little bit downwards in order to start and meet the point where I started this embroidery line. And now I'll go back to the same point uh, of my last stitch. And then I will go out with my needle at the same point where my first stitch is just starting. And then I will go back to the last step I just made and then back to this beginning point once again. The idea is to just to close the line and to give it a sense of the continuity. And then I have the two yarn tails at the same point. So what I'll do is to take each of them into the back of the work to hide inside the fish um, construction or body or you know what I mean. Yeah, and that's it. That's how I will leave it. I can go ahead and secure these, um, these yarn tails a little bit inside of the fish without showing, of course, without showing in the front side, but yeah, this way I can secure it. I'll do the same with the with the second tail. Just go under two or three stitches, splitting the yarn from the back side of the stitches just in order not to show in the front side and then I'll hide it inside the fish and that's it now I can continue working the body and the idea is to make this meeting point the last stitch stitch that we just made locate it at the neck of the fish so the next step is to locate the eyes. I'll be back in a minute to show you how we do it. In order to make the eyes, 
I prepared a little ball of the same silk mohair so I, I can hold two strands of the same silk mohair together to make the eyes. You can make the eyes either of two strands of silk mohair or one strand of fingering yarn. I think you can play around with it and try different options. The pattern tells me to start with a magic loop and this is my way to start. I'll show it to you again. This is my magic loop. And then the pattern tells me to single crochet uh, 10 stitches in the yarn loop. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And now I want to tighten this loop to close the hole. I don't want to have a hole in this eye, fish eye. Then the pattern tells me to single crochet in each stitch around into the back loop only. So I'm going to use, I hope I have a little, oh, here. Um, I'm going to use these back loop stitches to create a single crochet. To make a single crochet, you have to dig in the stitches and to insert your needle into the back loop only. One, two, three. So let me finish this round and make two eyes for the fish. And I'll get back to you when I'm done to show you how we attach the eyes. And now I have two eyes made and let me show you how I close the eye when I finish it. So I pull the stitch all the way up on my last stitch, of course. And then I take a tapestry needle and thread the yarn onto the tapestry needle. I want to make an invisible join in order to create a seamless line at the contour edge. Um, so I'm inserting my needle into the, not into the next stitch, but into the stitch after that, only to the back loop. And I'll pull, I pull the yarn all the way through. And then I want to insert my tapestry needle into the middle of the last stitch made. And under the bar loop behind it. And I pull the yarn all the way through. Tighten this stitch a little bit. And I created a seamless contour line. So these are the two eyes and I'm going to show you how I attach them to the head of the fish. So as I explained before, I want to locate the last stitch of my embroidery line in the neck of the fish. Imagine like, this is the neck point and I want to locate the eyes. First, I will cut these yarn ta tails. And now I want to locate the eyes at the upper side. You know what? I might put brighter background to show you how I do it because the color of the table is too close to the color of the work so might make it easier for you so i want to locate the eye at the 
front and up side of the head just like that i want to see just a little bit of nose and just a little bit of the top section of its head and i want to keep my work three-dimensional. I don't want to flatten the eyes while sewing them. I would like to keep my attention to each and every stitch I make. And it's very small, so I can go outside in between the stitches, but not to hurt the stitches, to use the holes between the stitches. And I'm going back. And I just want to make sure the eye is attached to the head. It doesn't have to be sewn in each and every stitch around, but more or less just to make sure the eye is attached properly. This is quite okay. And I can check all the corners and I can see it's attached. And then I'm going back and forth just to secure my yarn end and take it out of the needle and hide the yarn tail inside my fish. And I always take care that the last stitch on the body is ready for me to complete my work when I'm done with it. So I'm just about to finish sewing the second eye to its place. I'll make the last steps with you here so you have a chance to see more of me making this sewing job which is I know not all of us are happy with sewing on our crochet toys and animals but sometimes we have to give some sewing work put some sewing work into the making and that's it and i'm putting the yarn tail yarn in into the fish body and i'm ready to go so yeah i will continue making crocheting the body and I will fill in a little stuffing material as I go, as the pattern tells me. And I will be back to show you how I create the yarn tail and how I weave in the so ends. Now I'm at the point where I already made the first part on the fish tail, and that's how it looks. I continue using the same yarns, but I did change my hook size to a three millimeter crochet hook. The pattern tells me to single crochet into the next um, single crochet from the last round of the body, but I have to take the two layers with me as if it's a sandwich. I just insert my hook into the next single crochet on the body part, and then I insert my hook into the parallel stitch on the second layer and I do close it as if it's a sandwich.
And as you can see, I left the tail part, the last part of the body, I left it empty. And at the rest of the fish, I filled it with a little stuffing material. The next step is, as part two tells me, I have to repeat everything uh, from part one. So I will chain seven. And I will make all the steps from part one of the fish tail. I'll finish this part and I will be back to show you how I close the tail and how I weave in the end. So I just finished repeating the stitches inside my chain seven and I have the two parts of the tail, of the fish tail, and I want to close it. So the last step on the pattern says to slip stitch into the body part, and once again using the two layers and close. So first slip stitch is made here, and the second slip stitch is made into the last two stitches of the body. Oops. Yeah, and this is the second slip stitch. And I give it a little tug and that's it. So now I will cut the yarn. Leave, it, leave a little yarn tail pull the stitch all the way up and now I want to close um, the work and to weave in the ends so I'm just taking the yarn end and I'm hiding it inside the body of the fish, I insert my needle in between the stitches with, without hurting the, the stitches. And I want to make sure the tail didn't get any twist to a side that I don't like or something like that. Then again, I'm taking it inside the body and pulling it out in between the stitches. I will repeat this step a few more times. Just to hide the yarn tail inside the stuffing material without hurting my stitches. So just be careful with this. And now I can take a scissors and just carefully cut the yarn without cutting the stitches, huh? And that's it. So this is like the back side of the tail and this is the front side, but I really like them both. That's it. That's everything you need to know about the fish making. I really hope you find it helpful. I will leave a link to this pattern down below in the description box for you. Please let me know in the comment if you enjoy the making, if you gave it a go and I'll see you on my next one.